Pirate ships were as diverse as the pirates that crewed them, ranging from sleek and nimble sloops to imposing frigates and versatile brigantines. These different ship types provided pirates with specific advantages. Sloops, for instance, were swift and agile, ideal for chasing down prey and escaping pursuit. Frigates, on the other hand, were larger and heavily armed, making them suitable for intimidating targets and engaging in extended naval battles. Brigantines offered a balance between speed and firepower, often serving as workhorses. Understanding these distinctions was crucial for pirates when choosing the right vessel for their exploits. While pirate ships varied in size and design, they shared several common features that defined their identity. These vessels typically featured multiple masts with distinctive square triangular sails, allowing pirates to navigate a range of wind conditions. Pirate ships were often armed with cannons, swivel guns, and small arms for defense and offense. The presence of a crow's nest provided a vantage point for spotting potential targets or dangers in the horizon. Additionally, many pirate ships sported a distinctive black flag, such as the Jolly Roger, as a symbol of their pirate identity. Speed, maneuverability, and firepower were paramount for pirate ships. Speed allowed pirates to catch merchant vessels or evade pursuing naval vessels, giving them the element of surprise. Maneuverability was essential for navigating treacherous waters, such as shallow coastal areas and narrow channels, where pirates often sought refuge. Firepower, in the form of cannons and swivel guns, gave pirate ships the upper hand in engagements, enabling them to disable or intimidate their targets effectively. A well-armed and agile ship could mean the difference between a successful raid and a failed attempt. In the world of piracy, obtaining the right ship was a crucial step for any aspiring buccaneer. Pirates acquired their vessels through a variety of means, each reflecting the resourcefulness and audacity that defined their trade. Pirates were opportunists, and they employed various methods to obtain their ships. One common approach was capturing enemy vessels. Pirates prowled the seas, ambushing merchant ships, and when a suitable prize was captured, it became a new pirate ship, sometimes after modifications and renaming. Interestingly, some of these merchant vessels had originally served as slave ships, designed for speed to ensure the rapid transport of their human cargo. The need for speed in these cases wasn't for the comfort of the enslaved individuals, but rather to minimize death during the harrowing voyage, as dead slaves translated into lost income for the slave traders. The selection of the right ship was paramount for pirates. It determined their success in raids, their ability to evade pursuit, and their overall effectiveness as pirates. Smaller, more agile ships like sloops and brigantines were favored for their speed and maneuverability. These vessels allowed pirates to chase down prey and navigate coastal waters, making them ideal for piracy in the Caribbean and other shallow, crowded areas. An interesting example is that of Stead Bonnet, known as the Gentleman Pirate. He took a unique path in purchasing a ship, the Revenge, and refitting it for piracy. Bonnet's story illustrates how individuals from various backgrounds could become pirates, emphasizing the allure of this daring lifestyle. On the other hand, larger and heavily armed ships like frigates were chosen for their firepower and intimidation factor. These vessels could engage in extended naval battles and impose their will on merchant vessels, often forcing them to surrender without a fight. The golden age of piracy is filled with stories of legendary ships, each with its own tales of daring exploits. Among them, the Witta Galley stands out. Captain by the infamous Black Sam Bellamy, the Witta was a former slave ship turned pirate vessel. It was heavily armed and capable of navigating treacherous waters, making it a formidable force. Tragically, the ship met its end in a violent storm off Cape Cod, taking Bellamy and nearly all of his crew down with it. Queen Anne's Revenge, commanded by the notorious Edward Thatch, better known as Blackbeard, was a menacing sight on the seas. This former French slave ship, La Concorde, was outfitted with 40 guns, making it a formidable opponent. Though only used by Blackbeard from November 1717 until June 1718, when it ran aground, possibly intentionally, it certainly would have struck fear into the hearts of both merchant captains and naval forces alike. The Fancy, a 46-gun frigate commanded by Henry Every, was a terror on the high seas between 1694 and late 1695. Fancy was originally a warship and was taken by Every during mutiny. 
It was renowned for its size and firepower, and after being modified by Every, it was one of the fastest ships operating at the time. This enabled Every and his crew to plunder numerous vessels during their lucrative reign of piracy. As I mentioned earlier, pirate ships weren't just vessels, they were tools of terror and instruments of plunder. Pirates understood the need to customize and upgrade their ships to optimize them for their treacherous trade. Pirates knew that superior firepower was essential for their raids and defenses. Upgrading the ship was a common practice among pirate crews. Cannons were a pirate ship's primary weapon, and they were often modified and increased in number. Swivel guns, smaller cannons with a wide range of motion, were mounted on decks to provide additional firepower and cover multiple angles. These enhancements ensured that pirate ships were well equipped for engagements with both merchant vessels and naval forces. Pirates didn't hesitate to modify the structure of their ships for improved performance. Razang, a process of reducing the number of decks, was a popular method during the 17th century. By cutting down their ships, pirates and navies alike aimed to reduce top weight, making the vessels better sailors. This alteration made the ships safer and faster, qualities highly valued by pirates. Razang did not reduce the number of gun decks, but had the effect of making the ship handle better. Removing the upper works, such as cabins, eliminated windage and reduced weight, ultimately making the ship lighter overall. Pirate captains understood that maneuverability could mean the difference between capturing or losing a prize. Pirates took measures to optimize their ships for battle and the efficient storage of plunder. They removed bulkheads, allowing them to move more freely around the ship during engagement. This alteration also created additional storage space, enabling pirates to stow their ill-gotten gains quickly. Pirates were ruthless in eliminating anything non-essential for speed and storage. Every ounce counted in the pursuit of maximum loot and swift getaways. The pirate's objective was clear, strip the ship down to its essentials. Careening was one of the first tasks pirates typically performed upon capturing a ship. This process involved intentionally grounding the vessel to remove growth from the hull. Barnacles and seaweed could slow a ship down significantly, so pirates wasted no time in scraping their newly acquired prizes clean. Careening not only improved his ship's speed, but also maintained its maneuverability, making it ready for further pursuits in the high seas. Pirate captains may have made the decisions on maintenance, or in other cases, the crew would have voted on it. But in any case, everybody would have pitched in from the captain all the way down to the newest crew members. Whether it was razzing the ship for improved maneuverability or removing bulkheads to create more storage space, all hands came together in making these changes a reality. This included patching up hull damage sustained during battles or in rough seas, ensuring that all rigging and sails were in good order, and keeping the ship's essential systems functional. Pirates often had a carpenter aboard who could fashion necessary repairs in the most remote corners of the high seas. Careening was a physically demanding task, and the crew worked together to ground the ship, scrape the hull clean, and get it ready for action. This laborious process required teamwork and effort from every member to ensure the ship's continued speed and agility. Upgrading the guns was a collaborative effort. Crew members with expertise in gunnery played a pivotal role in enhancing the ship's firepower. They not only operated the cannons during battles, but also maintained them, ensuring they were in optimal condition to unleash destruction upon their adversaries. The legacy of pirate ships extends far beyond the golden age of piracy leaving an indelible mark on naval warfare and capturing the imagination of countless generations through popular culture. Pirate ships were pioneers of naval tactics that still resonate with modern military strategies. Their smaller, more agile vessels, such as sloops and brigantines, set the stage for the development of warships with improved maneuverability. The concept of razang, or reducing the number of decks, also found practical application in naval warfare, making ships more nimble and combat ready. Pirate tactics, characterized by surprise attacks, hit-and-run strategies, and cunning maneuvering, continue to inspire naval commanders seeking innovative approaches to combat. Pirates were masters of intimidation, often achieving their goals without firing a shot by instilling fear in their adversaries. From literature to film and video games, the allure of pirate ships still persists. The vivid imagery of billowing black sails adorned with skull and crossbone flags has become synonymous with piracy itself. Pirate-themed books like Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson and movies such as Pirates of the Caribbean have captured the hearts of audiences worldwide, showcasing the enduring appeal of these seafaring tales. 
Video games like Assassin's Creed Black Flag allow players to step into the shoes of a pirate captain, reliving the excitement of the golden age of piracy. Before you chart your course for New Horizons, please take a moment to like and comment on this video. Your active participation fuels our journey, enabling me to shed light on captivating historical narratives. A special thank you goes out to my Patreon top-tier supporters, Patrick Chamberlain in 1660. All Patreon supporters get to watch these episodes early and without ads, and the lowest tier costs just $3 per month. If you're inspired to contribute, you'll find links to Patreon and PayPal below. And for those who crave even more information about the golden age of piracy, don't forget to pre-order my upcoming book, Untamed Waters, on Amazon. The link is down below in the description.